I'm Colby Smith. Subscribe to this video underneath. I'm sick of David Cameron rattling on about World War One, telling us we should light a candle, we should remember all the great and glory, the glorious deeds that we've done, you know, to advance the human race, to you know, protect democracy and freedom of speech over the course of two wars. And he's saying, you know, 18 million people died. The war wasn't futile. 18 million people dying sounds pretty futile to me. It sounds pointless and backwards. And he's saying, you know, we've learned all this stuff. What have we learned? You know, 30, 40 years later, there was a second world war. And now, 100 years later, with how many minutes of peace have there been since World War One? Probably about, you know, you always hear like, there's been two days of peace in the last 100 years. We haven't learned anything as a race. Maybe as a country we've learned, you know, we can go to war and it makes loads of money for us. That's all we learn from that. I mean, a hundred years later, and we're like, there's so much tension in the globe right now. Economies are collapsing, empires are crumbling, the dollar's going down the pan, and they're, they're, they're not letting it go quietly. They're gonna go down with a fight. They wanna push Russia to the very brink. I mean, Vladimir Putin done pretty fucking well not to go absolutely mental in crime here and take over the whole of Ukraine. Because, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's what America would have done if Putin was on his doorstep. Just, I don't understand this. You can remember, they're glorifying war. They're glorifying the war, the dead, saying how noble it was. I mean, you're just lying. It was a war to protect our empire. It was a war for profit. As It was a war for the gain and the powerful, as all wars are. It's in favour of gaining the few at the top, the king, the rich. It was about them gaining at the expense of working men and women dying. What have we learned from that? Very, very little. And then I see he talks about the great men, the great deeds that, died, that, that happened in World War I. And you know, he destroyed fascism in World War II. And then, you know, then he's saying the great people that died in Iraq and Afghanistan. I'm like, oh, I see what you're trying to do there. You're trying to say that all wars are noble. All wars that we fight are noble. You're trying to say that because we destroyed fascism and, you know, we're a force for good. And we're still doing that good in Iraq and Afghanistan. I don't think, I'm not going to fall for that, David. I'm not going to fall for it. No way. You can't draw an instant parallel between all wars. For a start, there's about 60 years in between them. And for a second, you know, if it was that much of a war of, gr of good and democracy in Afghanistan, the whole world, instead of just America and England leading the charge, the whole world would have been involved. You'd have had people begging to be involved. Countries are like, come on, we want to be involved in saving the world. Everyone wants to save the world, surely. So why do we have to bully and lie our way into a war? That doesn't very really sound like a noble and just cause to me. And he's like saying, come on, everyone turn their lights out and light a candle at 10 o'clock. Everyone's like, oh, Britain's so fucking poor, they're probably sitting by candlelight already, you moron. Christ alive. It's just nationalism. That's all they want you to think. Just over the top nationalism. Oh, you know, get your poppies out, wave your flags for the Queen. That doesn't serve anyone except the Queen and the nation. We're not the nation, we're the people. The nation is the government, the people that rule it. That's the only thing that nationalism serves, you know. You know work hard for your country for 40 years. You know, you'll work hard to make this country better for GDP. People don't give their lives in wars to make this country better anymore. People give 40 years of their life back-breaking work, fucking soul-destroying, mind-crunching work. That's what they give for their country. And if it wasn't for pointless nationalism, people getting embedded with this point, you know, you got to work hard for your country, you know, do what's right. You're only, a moral, you're only a moral person in this country if you work hard, put your nose to the grindstone. And, you know... If we, that's the only reason people, you know, get get bullied and pushed into living this pointless life of servitude and you know, make your country great. You know, I work hard all my life. You, 
could work hard all your life, get to 60, and have fuck all to show for it. Doesn't mean you haven't worked hard, which means you've been you've been mugged over by employees, bosses, paying you a minimum wage. I mean it doesn't matter how hard you work, you can you know, you can work yourself into the grave. Your pension's still fucked at the end of the day. Your welfare's still getting destroyed. So what are we working for? Working for, you know, the few at the top. That's what we give our lives for nowadays. We're going like dig trenches and fight against the Huns. We fucking dig trenches in our own lives and get in them, stay in them for 40 years. But I'm not buying this whole, you know, World War One. you can celebrate the dead. You can remember the dead without having to glorify the war. Without having to, you know, lie about the reasons and the motives we went, for, we went to war for. Be honest, for Christ's sake. I mean, the propaganda already started by the time you've mentioned it. The Great War. There's nothing great about that war. They should call it the disastrous war. The disgusting war. You know, 18 million people died. What's great about that? How was Britain, how was our country better before it than it was after it? You know, there's nothing great about 18 million people, young men and women, dying. 18 million, every single one of those 18 million people had a mother, a father, maybe children, a brother, a sister, grandparents, aunties, uncles, friends, a job, a house. Something great about all of that being destroyed. Sickening. You know, we talk about just and heroic wars, you know, we were valiant, great Britain defending the world, great Britain. We're not so great when we're letting Palestinians die in their thousands, you know, 800 to 1,000 civilians getting blown off the map. Where's your double standards there? It's disgusting double standards. I'm just sick of having this pummeled into your brain, you know, you can't forget. They won't let you forget. Well, you know, if we're going to remember it, why don't we learn some lessons from it? Why don't we learn, you know, nationalism, the very same agenda you're pushing by celebrating this war is the same thing that gets you into wars itself, you know, countries trying to be the best, you know, at the expense of other countries. We want an empire at the expense of your empire. We want wealth at the expense of your wealth. We want your resources at the expense of your people. That's what nationalism is. Well, I'm sure we could all, you know, borders are just man-made, non-existent, they're not real. They weren't there on the earth, the earth was millions of years old and these borders are like a couple of hundred years old and we send men and women to die for, for a made up line in the fucking map. You know, there's nothing real about that. Nothing real about it at all.